dude, you got to know different nomenclatures and how to give a <clears> hug, <throat> bro. In Africa, they hit you with a fucking pipe, bro, if they love you. Just take a whiff of that fart. Just I'm not going to take a whiff of your fart. That's Come disgusting. on, bro. Get a little air appetizer, bro. Treat your but nose. Yeah, that is tremendous. Treat that. your snout to some of that fucking free booty pasta, bro, bro. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Poor fucking Lee. Lee, man. Dude, it's so funny. You know, sometimes when I, I'm not even joking about when I would need to think about something good, dude, I think about Lee, man. Well, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, I think about you, man. I think you I just. I think about you to laugh. You I mean just the stuff you say randomly? Like, I just want to hang out and, like, listen to what you say during the day to yourself. I just, I feel like it's hysterical. This conversation is getting creepy right here already. <laughs> well, yeah, you just Lee, farted I, on I, me. How? I think, I think Lee God might be it. a little cascadon. Oh yeah, yeah, I know I what you're talking might, about. No, you know shopping for closet. peppermint, they call it, dude. Yeah, where I'm I think from, he's coming out of the closet pretty soon. Uh, they say, hey, you know the boy over there, little little Lawrence. I don't give a fuck if he's. Little, I don't care gay. either, bro. I'll let you yeah, hang off my gay. dick like a fucking mountain cat. No, I would never let Lee. <laughs> Not you guys, but I I don't have the same relationship with him. Yeah, but you're still friends. You can't. I'm friends with him. I wouldn't fuck him. I'd let him touch my dick a little. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Down the, around the holidays, bro? Just to make his day. Oh, he's a prison ham, this guy, bro. I fucking love that boy. Dog, you know how much money? I told Lee Walk, Walk, Walker Lee one night mm -hmm. you know how much money we can make with Lee on the inside. Oh, my God. Just sitting on people's laps. Dealing cards. And rubbing their dick. Yeah. Wow, just I'm glad we're bringing this back. You can't just <laughs> sit on someone's lap, but they're not going to let it end at just lap sitting. Bro. Uh, so they're not in prison because they, 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 they know Gary, how to Gary, Indiana, back. you're an eight, bro. A warm female. In Gary, Indiana, dog, you're oh, a female Gary, eight, baby. Indiana, I got a guy that'll pay ten G's for you to put a wig on. And, oh uh, yeah, a special type of podcast, and just me. mug his dick with he's, your fucking neck. He's already ripped me a letter. <laughs> what does that even mean, mug his dick? <laughs> Lee, you got to get out more. Get off the internet, bro. You got to go hitchhiking, man. I really don't. I don't want to now. You should go hitchhiking later one day as a school project. Yeah, I'm gonna end up dead. No, what school are you in? Are you doing classes online? <laughs> no, I need to be classes here. This is the only. How old are you, Lee? Thirty now. Are you really? Yeah. I thought you were like nineteen, dude. I wish. Are you really thirty years old? Yeah. You're thirty years old. Oh you're my 30. god, bro! My whole perception of you, I thought you were like a, a like a. He you was know, a, he was a college an intern kid when he first came in here. Oh wow! But look oh, at him now. Now he's a years. fucking young man. That's awesome. Now, now you don't like me as much. You like that? No, I don't. Like no, it's just different. You ever notice when you learn something about somebody you didn't know? You know. Like you see somebody and they're like a lawyer or something, but then you realize they're like a sorcerer or something. Or they do shade, shady shit. Or you see them like ballroom dancing. And you're like, this fucking guy ballroom dances? I always that, that always takes my brain a minute. Or if you see a big, big person and they got their stomach stapled. And now, dude, I was at a pool one time. And I used to work on this farm in the summertime in Natchez, Mississippi. And they had... Uh, and this dude, Don Blankenstein, was the pool guy every year, right? And he'd come out there, and I'd keep an eye on him because the dude weighed probably seven or 800 pounds, bro. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He broke the gate every time he come in. He but fucking, he was the lifeguard? He was you know, How can you be a lifeguard, 800 pounds? Bro, he like, gets in the pool? Trust old. me, nobody's drowning, bro. All the water's out, and the fucking kid who's sick is laying right he there at the He was the feet. boss at the pool. No, he was the, he was the guy who came to put the, the cleaner in the pool. And so... But he'd open the gate, bro, and every time he'd walk through it and bring both sides of the gate down. Like, he was just a, he was going to die soon, you know, when you saw him. You know, so you treated him well. And that's one thing I like sometimes about seeing huge people that remind you how to treat other people. Because you're like, oh, this person isn't going to be alive very long, so you would be extra nice to him. And so, but then Don, one summer, I'm, I'm out there laying by the pool, and, uh, and this skinny guy comes in. You know, he could have fit through the gate with 90 of his fucking, you know quintuplets or whatever <laughs> and he comes through the gate and i'm like who? and he keeps talking to me and i'm thinking the guy's kind of a you know peppermint hunter bro you know what i'm saying a little tender and it turns out it's don blanken uh blankenstein he got the stomach thing and he lost all the weight and he was a different person though he wasn't the same I don't know. It wasn't the same, and our relationship was never the same as when he lost. As when when he lost the weight. I think I'm one they take. I don't know what we're talking. Okay, about. you just got to monitor what's going on because I just. I, yeah, I don't like to. I didn't like to party. I just like to put myself in a crazy situation. Fuck bro. yeah, me too. You know, I was. That's what I was thinking about the whole time. You're saying that I go. Yeah. I don't miss the drugs. I miss the six o'clock on a diner or 
waking up and some girl gives you an Audi to drive home. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck just happened last night? Yeah. Dude, I was in Louisville one time. I came out of a show. They had a big group in a limousine. They invited me to go to an after party with them, right? I was like, I'm only coming if my boy can come. And I'm like, who's your boy? And I'm like, Le Cedric. They had a brother nearby, right, wearing this <laughs> Louis Vuitton jacket, dude. Probably about 60% homeless, right? And they're like, that's your boy? And I didn't even talk to this dude, right? I was like, yeah, that's my boy. And like, all right, he can come. So I fucking walk over to him, look him right in the eyes. And I was like, what's up, man? I'm Theo. He's like, Le Cedric. And uh, I was like, all right, dude, I told these people you're my friend. You ever been in a limousine? He's like, nah. -uh. I was like, all right, come get in with us. Just act like you're my friend, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to a party. He's like, all right, man. So we go in the limo, bro. We're in there, hot chicks, dudes, people fucking. Little Cedric kept saying, we're friends. That's what he kept saying out loud, right? <laughs> kind of fucking not the best actor, bro. But did we get to this house party? It's a nice, cool fucking party, bro. <laughs> I'm downstairs. I'm in the kitchen. Somebody's making us a drink. I'm talking to somebody. Fuck is six minutes later, right? I hear a fucking somebody scream. I hear a window break, right? Somebody comes running down. They said some dude just stole like four purses out of the coat room upstairs and fucking jumped out a window. That would have been me, Doug. And that was I... fucking Le Cedric, bro. Uh. And that was like, but, and everybody there was like crying and pissed. And some girl was like furious because all her tampons were in there or something. I remember she got pissed. She was a tough girl. She was like one of those, uh, what are those people that slide the thing on the ice, she said? Curlers? Curl. <laughs> yeah, she was a curler. And, uh, but I was, in my head, I was like, this is the best fucking night ever. <laughs> No, that's uh. so just shit like that where I just love to put life just in precarious situations. It's yeah, yeah, man. I remember. Oh, Puerto Ricans, you were talking that they used to say, uh, that's when did you guys? Oh, I was talking about the first Mexican kid we had in our town, right? So we had class with the hamsters, right? Going yeah. back to that, right? The, the, <laughs> That man, Mr. Bl Mr. Blackwell's class. We had the hamsters. They let you keep the hamsters after Superman got killed? No, no, no. That was it. Yeah, I just mean it was that same time, bro. And everybody would get a different pet. And uh, we used to play this game where you would like, somebody would lay down and you would put a snake on their back or a fake snake on their back, right? And you would play guess if I have a snake on my back or not, right? <laughs> and people would literally bet. Uh, if they did or what they were going to guess. And then sometimes we would put this game where you, because they had this one rabbit in there that was always falling asleep. It was like almost, hey, you know, like a whatever rabbit narcolepsy kind of is, you know, where he just drifts off, you know, because it's a rabbit. They're not doing much, you know. And you would set a rabbit on a pile of money and you try to pull the dollars out from under him and, uh, and without waking him up. That was like the biggest uh, thing we used to do in class before class. But the problem, but the, not the problem, but the thing that happened was this Mexican kid moved in named Nick, right? And the first thing he ever said in class, the man was, uh, in science, they also taught you sex ed, right? So, like the first day this kid, Nick, was in there, it was during the sex ed part. And he stands up and he goes, uh, what is, <laughs> he goes, what does pop that cherry mean? That's what he said, dude. <laughs> He asked the fucking teacher, like, as serious as could be, he's like, who does pop that cherry mean? And then he, uh, he ended up banging some girl, like, in sixth grade, right? And, uh, and she broke up with him, broke his heart, and he, he started to like rap music, and he wore this t-shirt that said, Nick the Rapper, that he wrote on it with a marker, right? But he only put one P in it, and it said, Nick the Raper on it, the fucking shirt that he wore. And they fucking expelled him. They expelled him. That's racism. Uh, I guess he was Mexican. But see, Mexican didn't play a part in it. He was a bad speller, and he fucking was asking stupid questions. What does pop that cherry mean? Pop that cherry. Remember that saying? You don't hear that anymore, dude. You never hear that. Never saying. hear that shit. Yeah, I bet her cherry's been popped. Yeah. You could tell if you look at her. Watch how she walks. Watch I never I never popped anyone's cherry. You, you didn't? Did? No. Nope. You still out there, though. Man, you married? No, nah, almost. Nah, you're not, bro. You'll get a little bit of fucking trim that's fucking <laughs> never been anywhere. I don't know. That's a lot of pressure. Dude, I'll tell that's you this. That's more pressure than voting me. Buddy of mine, okay? First time my buddy got some trim, right? Uh, we were at this dance, and my buddy ended up you know, touching this gal's vagina after the deal, after the dance. 
and we uh, all were sitting around this fire at his at his house later, and uh, so he's like, you know, telling everybody what happened. And my buddy's dad came out right and heard it and kept smelling my buddy's fingers. Then while we're standing out by the fire, dude, <laughs> for probably like forty minutes. <laughs> Is that fucking nuts? How man? terrible would that be? If yeah. You did it? Yeah. Oh, you be rubbing your pants? What do you do? It's gnarly, right? And then the same night, bro, I was sleeping in this guy's room, and he had a bunch of pets stacked up along the walls because he loved all kinds of pets. And there was five of us sharing a bed, right? And um, and <laughs> <laughs> all night, bro, I can't sleep, right? Because I'm, sca- I'm scared of all these Jesus animals, Christ. bro. I'm scared of all of these animals, bro. And uh-huh. I can't sleep, right? And so... Uh, I'm just thankful that this one, <laughs> this dog keeps barking, man. I'm so high that this dog. I'm just thankful that this dog outside the window keeps barking. I'm like, cause I'm awake, I can't sleep. Right, all the other four kids in his bed are asleep, and you can just hear these pets moving in their cages. And he had a big ceiling fan in the middle of the room that was spinning, right? So it's like whirling up all these pets, that's right? Terrible. And even though we can sleep, is keeping them awake. Cause you got to think a ceiling fan for a pet, that's got to be like you know. A fucking tornado going off constantly, right? <laughs> we don't think about that, you know? So I'm fucking laying in the bed. Thankfully, this dog barks every now and then. It keeps me company, right? Even though it's outside. And then you hear boom, 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 boom. My buddy's dad walked out there, killed the dog right outside the fucking window. Boom! Went back to sleep, dude. Same dude that hours earlier had been smelling a young man's hand, man. Same man. And that's what blew my mind about the world. Like, how could at one moment a guy be so gentle? That dude's a monster. And then, yeah, and then seven hours later be blowing a freaking animal's head open because it was barking, you know? You have an animal in the woods, bro. It's going to bark. You know how much woods is out there? You know, he probably hears everything. They said they can hear everything. Imagine hearing six times something. You'd fucking be angry, you know, your neighbor, you know, four houses over. I don't know, man. I'm high, bro. First, you talk about incest, and you gotta talk about killing dogs. Why you gotta bring me down? Sorry, man. I'm bringing you down. I've been that down since fucking. Oh, dog. I'm sorry. Since Lee told me his girlfriend don't do laundry. Oh, damn. I haven't been that fucking depressed. How are you gonna get the laundry done, dude? She doesn't live with me. Why would you do my laundry? I do my I did my laundry. I didn't bring it to the thing. Bro, it's, if you're really in love with it, you should fucking leave a load over there. When you go back two days later, see if it's clean or her not. Her mom would That's do it. That's if it's love. No, but the thing is, she still lives with her mom. Her mom would do it. Oh, wow. Her mom has offered. Fuck yeah. Bring it over there. Fold the these, put starch on them. Is her mom married to a brother or not? Have you ever no. had fun? <laughs> She's Mexican. <laughs> Have you ever had Who's starch Arthur, in the underwear? Yeah. Uh, starch in my underwear? Yeah. No, that's oh, not, that oh, sounds wow. terrible. Why would you want starch? Fucking tremendous. Make you feel like an adult. Uh, soft. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Makes you feel like you have a checkbook, you know? It makes you fucking feel good. That's what I miss, bro. Look at fucking Lee. You got to go into the house now. How are you going to act? Nick the Raper. Good. Nick the Rapper. <laughs> like a tall, in shape, good looking dude. I'd look at you and I think there's nothing wrong in his life at all. Like, oh. there's no way he's self conscious about anything. Well, I guess now, we're both you, wrong, man. I look at you and I think this guy's fucking what environment, got it all. What you environment know? do you feel comfortable in? Just a more real environment, a more just calm, uh, uh, just a, a, an 10 people, 50 people, 100 people. Yeah, as long as, yeah, I can, I can feel okay in 10, 50. When it gets to, to be a little more than that, it's, sometimes it's just too much. But when the music's loud and I can't communicate with people, then that's where I start to feel uncomfortable. That's my end. That's my fucking But I kept end. going back. I kept thinking there was something wrong with me, that the environment was okay. Yeah. But it wasn't, man. And that's what happened that night. I went to this club, and uh, they had a party for my friend's fashion line. And then I got in this taxi after this girl gets in with me. I left early because I was going to be on Opie and Jim Norton. This is when Opie and Jim were still together. And uh, this beautiful girl gets in the taxi with me, this Asian girl. And she just started talking about the night. She said that she had fun at the party, but that her boyfriend wasn't in town. Then she goes, her boyfriend's never in town. Then she's like, what happens in taxis stays in taxis, right? That's what she said. So I'm thinking, fuck yeah, you know, like. She wants me to make a move on her. So I make a move, shut me down. And I don't know if that's what made me feel weird after that or whatever, but the taxi dropped her off after that. And uh, and then it was just me and the driver, bro. And this dude spoke another language, you know, something fucking fancy, you know, something that could play soccer, you know, like this dude, fucking, you know, <laughs> like this dude was betting on fucking foreign soccer games on his phone for sure, you know. And uh, he said, I thought he said drugs, dude. And I just said cocaine. That's what I said. And next thing you know, we're in North Harlem. 
Um, he bought some cocaine for us. He comes back in the car. We're doing cocaine. And then he's like, I got a gift for you. I got a gift, you know? And I thought it was going to be, you know, I grew up in like a troubled area. I thought it was going to be his dick, you know? Like, I'm, you know, that's what I was expecting anyway. And, uh, and then a hook, a prostitute knocks on the door, you know? This lady gets in. And I think it was a man, honestly, in hindsight. She had these big sunglasses on. Kind of a man's face that was under the sunglasses. You have cocktails in you at this point? Yeah, had a couple of tequilas, dude. And uh, so now we're partying, bro. Me, him, and me and the driver were first partying for about an hour. Dude, I got so high, I remember thinking, where is the driver? That's how fucking high I was. <laughs> and he was sitting next to me doing cocaine. <laughs> yeah, at, at what point does this become not a taxi cab ride? Like, when does the meter get turned off? Like, this Oh, is the meter's weird... going, bro. The meter's at about 270, bro. Uh, no. So he's got to fucking be positive because I'm paying for this experience, bro. <laughs> so then, dude. This hooker gets in. She had, she had kind of long hair, huge sunglasses, covered about sixty percent of her face, and the forty percent of her face you you could see to me look like a man's face, right? Like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just like if I were on a game show and it was like guess forty percent of this person's face, I would have guessed man first, right? You know what I'm saying? Like look like a man's face, you know? Or it looked like a woman had just shaved recently. That's what it looked like, you know. Oh. So anyway, we're all oh. doing, we're all we're all getting high together, and the hooker starts making advances towards me, bro. This sounds ridiculous. <laughs> and I got out of the car, man. I felt uncomfortable, dude. <laughs> so then, dude, you like slide. You don't understand. Up? In my world, I'm thinking you're a Louisiana boy in fucking Harlem. No shit do you feel out of place. I feel out of place there, but no. I always felt comfortable in North Harlem. Yeah. Right, that's, I know that neighborhood where you're at. You know what I'm saying? You're not in the Bronx yet. Right? You're not in the yeah, Bronx Yeah, I don't know yet. where we're at. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. You're, <laughs> I don't know where we're at, dude. Was it dark? It was a dark Dark, that's all that matters, yeah. You ain't having a good time if you're not in a dark neighborhood on oh, one part of the night. I was raised in one. I know when I'm oh, back. Oh, my God. You know, I know when I'm back. Bro. Now, what time is all this going down? It's about 3.30. All right, so what so time? Late. So you walk out of the cab. Where are you now? You getting another cab? No, I'm in the street. Luigi comes out after me. That's the dude I was partying with the driver. <sighs> and dude, you know what's crazy is he had even one of the lights on the taxi wouldn't go off, and he made like this little paper mache thing and put it over the light, bro. Like this dude was. I mean, I don't think he was homosexual, but this dude was about the most romantic fucking cab driver I've ever spent time with, dude. And dude, it was more romantic in that taxi than it was at your fucking Airbnb, <laughs> bro. That's the saddest part. <laughs> So, dude, I get out. He comes out after me. <laughs> he made me give him 100 bucks, right? And I gave him the 100 because I was a little scared at this point. And I'm thinking he's going to pay the hooker and she'll go. But then I look back over there a couple minutes later, a minute later. Um, and they're kissing on each other's necks. He's spending my 100 with this hooker, dude. He fucking just got this 100 out of me, bro. <laughs> Wait, so your taxi driver bullied you into buying him a hooker? <laughs> no. He owed him money anyway. But right away, he took the money. Luigi took the money and said, hold on five minutes. Let me, go get tw- let me go get $20 worth off this hooker. He took that money and reinvested it in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And look, I respect hookers, man. Like, you know, I've been through some tough nights, man. Not in fucking North Harlem. <laughs> yeah, right, but still, man. I don't give a fuck. What you well, here's, I respect women that are out there if they got to be out there selling their bodies. No, I, I don't have nothing right. against that. I know you don't. But in North Harlem, you ain't getting into nothing good. Yeah, yeah, you understand true. me? You keep saying North Harlem. Are there Harlem? I don't know. Harlem? I don't know. It's like East Harlem. Listen, okay? all I know it is North, I used to go to Harlem to buy coke, and I'd see women out there. And, dog, let me tell you something. It's an illusion. Yeah. It's an illusion. First of all, four out of ten of them got bigger dicks than you. Oh, damn. Lady. Four? Four out of ten of those chicks. We don't like those In odds. those days, it was, you got to remember, up in Harlem in those days, the Bronx, it was open fucking corral. And then the 90s, the Russians came. Oh, yeah. And I never saw it, but I had friends tell me, you go to Queens, and there'd be six-foot Russian blondes with leopard miniskirts. That you give them three hundred just to eat the assholes. They were that hot, wow. like hot, banging, banging. Like they took over, so all the other ones, the crack hoes, disappeared. Yeah, all that, you know. But in those days, even when I was, when I got in trouble with my buddy, you know, Dodger, and we were going over there, those hookers, yeah, those city rat oh, hookers in those days, 
you had a that that takes a certain nerve. Yeah, a lot of them work at the Popeyes during the daytime. No, they, they don't work. They they're at the clinic in really? the daytime, oh, getting blood transfusions. Dude, we used to have this lady Victoria, Miss Victoria, in our neighborhood, bro. You could pull up, bro. You could eat her ass for like forty bucks, right? She'd sit in your car window, dude. Just basically put her ass in your fucking car window, like a fucking to go box, you know? You could if you had somebody driving, you could even have them drive the block, and she would just sit in there like a little side item, bro. But so this dude get Luigi. I give him the hundred. He gets back in the car. They're making out. I'm kind of pissed, dude. But I don't want to bring that negative energy back into the car, <laughs> right? So I deal with my feelings out in the street for a minute, kind of process through that. <laughs> Why that, don't you want to bring negative feelings back into the car? Just because I'm already really extremely high, man. I'm under the influence of cocaine. Um, it's almost 4 a.m. Uh, and I don't know these people that well. And I still need to get home. And for some reason at this point, I feel like Luigi is responsible to get me home, right? So I get back in the front seat, right? And they're hooking up in the back, a little blowjob. Like it's getting it's getting wild, you know? Uh <laughs> And I want to still do cocaine, you know. So, I'm, but I don't want to interrupt them, dude. So I remember trying to quietly do cocaine in the front seat, just like, okay. <laughs> like, like, like the softest little inhale you could do. Were bro. you watching like, them at any oh, point? Oh, oh, yeah, some dude. <laughs> I was definitely listening hard. You know? <laughs> Did you stink? I mean, uh, no, it's like I don't like cologne. Like, Dude. All you smell is like cologne. Like when you walk in the middle of them, all you smell is like fucking heavy duty perfume. Covering yeah, I'm up. I'm trying to remember. She smelled like violence to me in tattoos. She was a <laughs> tough lady or man. I mean, I thought she was a man. The face looked like a man's face to me, but she had big sunglasses on. She could have been one of those taller Vietnamese people that kind of look black at night, you know? <laughs> uh,. So we're in there, and uh, now I'm in the car, and I'm trying to quietly do cocaine, dude. Like, just like a fucking, just like a, like just doing it in, like an installment. It's like I had a bump on layaway. Why do you, you know, have to be polite? Fucking, They're back there fucking. Why can't you just? Because there's something wrong with me where I sacrifice other people. Like, I just feel like I got to be considerate at all times. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt them, dude. I guess. I don't know, man. I was fucked up, bro. So they're partying. At one point, I remember even turning my head back and just dumping cocaine quietly into the top of my nose like this. <laughs> just like, just as quiet as I could be. And a cop goes by, dude. Cop goes by. I get scared. I tell Luigi I'm scared, bro. He don't, he don't give a fuck, dude. This is when I realized like, he didn't care about me as much as I cared about him, I guess. And he's like, you drive. You drive. And that's when I got in the driver's seat. And I drove, man. I drove us. I drove us about a mile and a half, dude. I don't even know where I was, dude. And uh, and then I pulled over because a voice in my head, bro. First, a voice in my head is like, dude, at least you're, it was like, you're out here, bro. You're high. You know, you're doing cocaine. Uh, but at least you're making money, you know? <laughs> like I was working. Like I was a cab driver. And that's when, like, dude, my brain's fucked up. Like this ain't my cab. You know, I got to pay for this. And then my brain was like, you don't have a commercial driver's license. And that's what got me to pull over, dude. That technicality that if a cop stopped me that I wouldn't have one. And I pulled over. I got another taxi. Got back to my hotel room. Finished doing my cocaine. And I had to be on Opie and Jim Norton that morning. And it's 5.30 now, dude. I took three showers, bro, in 10 minutes. Right? I have one question. Yeah. Did you pay Luigi or did you just kind of get out and just get into another camp? <clears throat> we ended up in a little bit of an argument at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I left $100 on the car seat. <laughs> And yelled adios at him really loud, bro. I don't even know if he spoke Spanish, dude. I'm just screaming adios at him. <laughs> him and this fucking hooker who had the smallest tits I've ever seen, bro. Looked like a man's chest. But uh, then I go to Opie and Jim, dude, and the other guest for the day is Daryl Strawberry. And I could not even feel my face, dude. I couldn't even think. Uh... And that's when I was like, this is a bad look, you know? I couldn't even talk. They were asking me questions, dude, and I'm just, I couldn't even, like, that. I, I couldn't feel my face. I could all my thoughts was coming out of my neck. Like, I was running on, on neck thoughts, dude. I'm fucking thinking with my neck, bro. So I fucking sat there for three hours, bro. Just roasting. Now I know how you feel, kind of late. I just sat there, this 
just boiling in my own fucking drug induced <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and, uh, and then I fucking left, bro. And I, I'm halfway there, halfway on the walk over there. I realized I had on fucking sweatpants with jeans over them, bro. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> That's like a catheter outfit. Like if you may, might be getting a catheter and you might have to stay overnight. <laughs> the other day I was at Denny's sitting next to her and she was playing with her fucking Barbie doll Fuck Denny's, with man. two little shoes on and the shoes kept falling off. I go, Mercy, <laughs> do me a favor. Give me the fucking shoes. We get the, we walk into Denny's and sure enough, Daddy, her shoe <laughs> fell off. I knew the fucking shoe was going to fall off. I fucking knew it. It's been falling off all fucking morning. <laughs> so I go, sit off over here and don't move. So I go outside, there's the shoe in the middle of the fucking driveway, a car drove over it, <laughs> poor Barbie's shoes all fucked up, now I gotta bring it in to sell it to her, I gotta put it back on the foot, the shoe was so fucked up, Barbie was limping, <laughs> so we're sitting there minding our own business, and who walks in out of all the seats, now the, the fucking place is empty, they got me waiting there because my wife went back to the fucking car, to the house, because she forgot that if she locked the door. CeeLo? Who walked in? CeeLo? No, 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 no. No CeeLo. I wouldn't. If oh, CeeLo C-Lo. walked, if I walked in, that and that fucking Denny's, I saw, were you with me when we saw, what's his name in there? I don't think so. Yeah, you were with me when we saw. Who was it? The guy with the braids? Home, home Improvement. Oh, Tim he, Allen? He goes there all the time. Wow. That's a That's a swing in Denny's over there. Yeah. I just don't go in there at night, because that's. You're born to get shot. You yeah, after nine. When oh, you go to a like Denny's, you might as well go to a Vegas to a country bro, concert. Bro, look. When you go to Denny's after 10 nowadays, you might as well sign up yeah. for the next country fucking concert yeah, and fucking whatever. Stand real close to the window and wave this time. Dude, this uh, this uh, <laughs> Bro, I used to do this bit about Denny's and how much I hated Denny's, right? Um, it's on your special. It's on my special, right? So anyway, I was like, I wish somebody would shoot up a fucking Denny's, right? That's what I would say. Dude, some kid puts in the comments, he goes, man, he puts a, cl- a, cl- a link to a YouTube clip. He goes, man, my dad actually got shot up at a fucking Denny's. He goes, somebody walked in with a gun and shot everybody in the place. One star. He goes... But I still love this bit that you do. <laughs> and that was beautiful, bro. Here yeah. I am joking about it. He said it really happened. He lost his father right next to a fucking grill, bro. Right next to a griddle. You know what? You got, you know, two brothers back there fucking sword fighting with spatulas. Hop, probably hopped up on fucking <laughs> methamphetamines, you know? <laughs> Not knowing they're going to lose their job to the fucking Mexican guy sitting at the bar, you know? Unbelievable, man. But that's God, dude. That kid came and he was just positive, man. There's a couple places where I go late night and I'm like, like one night me, Lee, and Becky went to Denny's on a fucking, on a, on a fucking Sunday night after a podcast. And we were having a good time, but the whole time I was like squatting under the bush by that window because <laughs> the window is on Burbank Boulevard yeah. I want to be a crip alright shoot up at Denny's I'm sitting there having fucking a salad <laughs> yeah. and something with my friend here and all of a sudden and Becky's sitting counterclockwise so she gets it right in the head we gotta bury Becky with a hat on with a, with a ten planet fucking <laughs> <laughs> with a chef hat on I like Josh Wolf you know what I'm saying <laughs> Why you think, like, that shouldn't be in my brain I'm scared of anything already I'm scared of everything well, you would look good in a chef hat you don't think I'm fucking scared you see me how many nights we leave here dying of hunger you and I one in the morning sometimes me and him he's cross-eyed yeah this guy if I t- at two in the morning if I go and lean listen I got a, sand- a sandwich coming over here just jiggle my balls I guarantee <laughs> I'll confuse him for ten minutes he'll be sitting there confused I don't know I got this jiggle his balls I washed my hands I've done worse I got a hand job from a Chinese chick one time <laughs> and she's feeding her steaks and fucking fattening her up when she's 18 you give her a stab and you marry her she don't know no different you hide her from the world what time is it I have no fucking idea it's been 1982 for days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't ask. Do you think we all come from incest? Really? When you really think about it, like, uh, well, we I'm have from to. a fucking island. Oh, then you have to have probably have. There's incest. I know for a fact that my grandmother and my grandfather, like third cousins or something like that. So there's got to yeah. be. I'm retarded from bloodstream. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Something along. I know something happened. My uncle told me for the first time. He said something, right? 
No, he told me, he goes, you know that your grand, great-grandmother and your great-grandfather were like third fucking cousins or yeah. something. That's why the maiden name is kind of weird. It's Valdez Malbares or some shit. They just dropped the Malbares or some shit. So it's an island. When you, you come from a fucking island, you, there's got to be incest somewhere along the line. I don't think I'd ever do incest, man, even if I think I had the hottest, hottest fam- family member ever, bro, ever. Think about that, though, dude. What about, Say if what every about cousin? Listen, what, I don't what, want to talk about incest on the church, though. Okay, we my got, bad. My, we got fucking boundaries here. We can't right, be talking right, about right. incest. Uh, I had right. a cousin I wanted to fuck, too, as a kid. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie to nobody. I, I ain't going to bullshit nobody. I thought you just said we couldn't talk about it. <laughs> when I was a kid, yeah, I, I had it. sex with, like, Puerto hear. Rican cousins. That oh, means, that's like, crazy. Your, like, your families grew up together, but you're not really blood. And they're like, you guys are cousins. Or some families encourage it. You guys should hook up. It would be a nice wedding. They, I had sex with a little girl. That, 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 that. She wasn't a little girl. She had hair. I didn't. Wow. First wow. time, Evie. Evie was her name. And she was older than me by a year. And I used to sleep over. And one day she goes, look at it. And I looked at it. I almost fucking died. Really? I had hair on it. I sniffed it. Dang, you got down there, huh? Young fella. No, really? I didn't eat it. I just sniffed it, I think. And right. I fucking ran away. Yeah, that first smell is pretty strong. A real, uh, I don't remember. Why well, you gotta talk about smells for it's Monday <laughs> night? I don't know. My bad. Is it Monday? It's fucking Thursday. What is it? Lisa? It's Thursday, Thursday, dude. Lisa, it's gotta go back to his house, stone to the gills. <laughs> Hope to God my mom's asleep. Why? She's not going to because the, look how high I am. Because you told nah, you'll her. probably be fine, man. You should bring her a half a joint, Lee, and just tell her how it's gonna go down tonight. Yeah, why don't you fucking do some crab my god? Yeah, you're fucking you're wicked because if not, you're gonna argue with her anyway. Just yeah. Bring, no, she knows. Bring home a half a bong, light that savage right in the living room. Yeah. No, as I, as I was leaving, she was like, do you want me to freeze the food? Because she made on me a whole bunch of food. Wow. And I was like, hey, you know what? Everything we had tonight, just leave it out because I'm going to want to eat that when I get home. And she's like, the whole like the whole breast? I was like, yeah, the whole another breast. Damn. So, I, uh, I'm i trying to think of what I was going to say, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the dent was for? Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, he <laughs> fucked up the side of his car. Into like a tree or something like that. Fuck him. You know me, dog. He loved this car. He was one of those dudes. I love this car. He would wax it out every day and shit. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Poor Lee. Oh, it's like oh, a beautiful I man. I took Lee too deep. Lee, like do a, another star to balance you out. Yeah, you got to fucking you know, balance even out, out your bro. pH. You need some fucking uh, <laughs> little bit of horchata, bro. You <laughs> need to fucking hit up the Mexican milkmaid, bro. Get her to spray in your mouth a little fucking Lee. Get your back. You got a baby bird, you little. Get your back on the branch. Get your back on the branch. Lee dude. is fucked up for you people who are not watching this. Dude, live. Uh, I remember one time we, uh, this, uh, um, fuck you You gonna be out to death. Well, you gonna me to death. I'm gonna be to death. <laughs> This Anything you say to death is always funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to death. Yes, I'm going to death. <laughs> what this girl told me made me hate her parents. Because, again, I don't give a fuck what you do. I don't give a fuck about what you do. But for you to drag your kid down the dark cave... <laughs> What's up, yeah, that's fucked up. What's going on, buddy? You all right over there? You all right over there? You want to go outside and get some air? I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the truth. You want to go outside and get some Damn, air? Dude. Let me do some fucking. Yeah. Let me do some fucking call the shout outs here. And we'll wrap this yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, there we go. Up. I think that's the idea. He's Can feeling fucked up. No, don't start. Let him get electrocuted. It's all right. We need somebody to get electrocuted on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I got electrocuted when I was younger, man. Actually, you know who saved me, bro? A brother saved me, man. And I don't know if you're out there. Would you stop already? You got electric. Yeah, at the you fair. Are. At the fair, they used to let us. They they used to let us come in a day early to the fair and test the rides. We didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know. We were fans who like want to know what's going on. Like I had people that were excited. I was coming here today. You know. And so that's good, man. That shit, that shit made me feel fucking. <laughs> that shit made me feel fucking human, dude. You Poor, know. <sighs> poorly, he's having a hard fucking time. He's over beautiful that. though. Oh. He's a beautiful. He's just got the fucking Lord running through his veins. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, bro. That's Christ. Lee is that's Christ reaching for him. I don't you know can if you see know, that. 
If you've been with the podcast since day one, you can see that man. Lee is the fucking man. And tonight we finally fucking Lee. Is I can the see it. I can man. see it. After this podcast goes, you have no idea, people. Yeah. See, I'm the motherfucker who sees him an hour after this and sees how funny Lee is, and he'll pass out right in front of you. Yeah, oh yeah, he's an you animal. Turn the lights off. You put Black Sabbath on. He'll come to life every like eight minutes. Man, Shane said I'm getting scared. <laughs> And that's the crazy part. Some people would be like, ah, that's fucked up. But to be brave enough to just let yourself go like that and relax like that, that's a beauty that I fucking don't have. That I wish I had, man. You know? He's looking for fucking Easter baskets. Oh, I blacked out one time here in Hollywood, and that scared me. I woke up in my own bed, had no clue how I got there. I'd wet the bed. I mean, I wet the bed till I was about 30 anyway. Cause I, did you too? My filter until I was like a teenager. Oh, that's nothing, bro. And uh, and and that was a pretty crazy night. Hold on one second. You went to bed so you were 13? <sighs> Pro- I don't know. Be probably honest. around there, I would guess, yeah. I got to watch you like a hug. Damn. Those people are always arsonists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Fucking it might have been a little bit, like maybe not 13, but close. Maybe 10, at least. Well, 10 ain't far from 13 if you're talking at least. <laughs> probably fucking... <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I had, a, I had a huge issue with it. It was terrible. Dude, I used to t- I used to have those buzzer underwear, bro. They put these underwear on you. When the urine would hit them, a buzzer would go off, oh right? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not joking. Look them up online. This ain't no joke, bro. So I went to my grandparents. My mother didn't tell them that I had these, right? <laughs> I'm really hoping these are a real thing and not just a, like a torture device your parents put on you. Not at all, <laughs> bro. They made by themselves. This doctor gave them to us, dude. This dude was a bona fide. Like Google. This dude was a bona fide doctor. So we went there. I got the electric pants on, dude. You know. <laughs> wait, wait. What should I Google? I'm getting my rest. Probably, uh, you know, buzzer underwear for urinators. Uh, I would Google buzzer underwear for urinators. Um, and uh, so then, <laughs> but they didn't tell my grandfather, right? So he fucking and they had a small house, bro, a little bitty house. So my fucking crotch is just butt. Like he he wakes up middle of the night, dude. I'm fucking. <laughs> You're on fire. <laughs> I'm not on fire, but I'm buzzing hard, bro. Because I'd had apple juice, man, and I pissed big on apple juice, dude. I fucking spray out on the AJ. So I'm in there just buzzing, dude. I didn't oh know. My God. And he came in. They he still got him? Yeah. Get me a pair, Lee. He didn't, he didn't that's know. That's what I want. Get me a pair. He didn't know I'm, what was going on. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, that's what, He comes I, in. He's scared, how bro. How loud is it? How loud is this? In a little bitty house, you could uh, you could hear it from down the hall. I just want to wake my wife up in the middle of that, like <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> I would just do two drops and you and it goes off. And uh, and so my grandfather's in there, right? And he's all scared and shit. And uh, oh, this would have been terrible when I was a kid. And he's pushing me with a broomstick, dude. He thought I was dead, dude. He didn't know what had happened to me. He thought I was possessed or dead. He's pushing me with a broomstick to wake me up, and he was worried because he had one of those heart makers. And uh, he was worried he would get electrocuted. He thought something was happening. He thought the house had short-circuited it or the, or the phone company had fucked up. That's what he thought the phone company had fucked up. So he thinks I'm fucking just laying there buzzing like I was just a fucking miscreant. But he died, man. My grandfather ended up dying. He died. Man. I love people. I love laughing. I love laughing at shit like this. That's, you can't write this shit. I forgot about that. You write that down. I did, man. This has been the best, man. I appreciate you having me on because I've been, I was sick the past two days, man. What was wrong with you? Oh, man. I had adult diarrhea, bro, to be honest. It happens. Those fucking flights. You're eating fucking Katrina leftovers still. Oh, yeah. They still got some guys got it in stock. Oh, they're serving fucking crippled pig pussy down there, bro, and I was eating it by a handful. What does, like, the urge feel like when you know, like, when you're trying to quit or when you're, like, at that point where it's not fun anymore? Like, like, what does it feel like to have, like, I, okay, I don't want to do cocaine, but, I like, I need to do cocaine right now? I think just, like, if you want something to eat, like, say you lay it in the living room, you know you got a couple of, uh... You know, a couple of fruit pops in the freezer, you know? Right, yeah. And you're like, you just remember it hits in your head. Ooh, I got them fruit pops. The yes. odds of you staying there and not going up and getting them. 99 out of 100 times, you're going to go get them fruit pops. Well, I feel like an asshole whenever, because, I mean, I've had issues with my weight for my whole life. And I, 
I relate in ways to your to this conversation, but I don't want to say, oh, it's the same with McDonald's with cocaine because I don't I don't know if it is, but I just like is it like a like if you if you sat there is like are you young at yourself? Go get the cocaine just this one time. Like is it is it oh, the yeah. same kind oh, of talk? Yeah. Same kind of. If I do it tonight, I won't do it here. But I got uh, two hundred dollars. It's for the rent on Friday. Yeah, you're making deals with. Oh, yourself. you start making deals with yourself. Well, I'll borrow a hundred, and she won't know. And then Friday, I'll borrow a hundred from Lee and pay the rent. It's it's a fucking horrible game. And see, for me, it started out fun. Yeah, 1979, 1980, 83, It was fun. Yeah, it was out in the open. If you didn't do it, there was something wrong with you. People didn't want you in the room because <laughs> yeah. you must be a fucking cop. Yeah. You'd go to a bar and you could feel steam from people's bodies nah. in those days. Like, that's how wide open it was. So your mind keeps thinking that, that that equation to a good time. I mean, in my case. Right. And then it took me to kidnapping somebody. Right. You know, I was telling my wife last night that after the kidnapping... I come out, it, I wasn't even out of prison two days, and I already had white powder in my nose. I mean, I can sit here and tell you they rehabbed me yeah. no fucking way. You talk a ton of shit while you're in there. Yeah. <clears throat> but you are what you are, let's be honest. I came out of, I came out of prison two days later. I was snorting, selling coke in the halfway Damn. house. A month later, I came up positive. Mm. You know, I mean, I didn't give a fuck about consequences. I had to have it because it equated fun for me yeah that was what it was and it was it was fun for me yeah i think the same man i think it yeah it started out like i remember the first time i ever did it actually i was in tucson arizona this dude we walk into a place some dude comes up from doing a line and you only have one eye right this dude uh listen when i meet somebody with one eye and they got drugs i want the <laughs> drugs he's doing yeah that's what i'm saying i'm like and i thought this dude had hit that line so hard he could like yeah, suck his eye into his pupil. head yeah, yeah. And I'm like, damn, that dude's having a good time, you know? Because I always like people that only have one eye or one, uh, you know, un unique people. Especially with party with. And at the end of the night, they finally break down and tell you how they lost the eye. Yeah. My brother shot me with a BB gun or something like that. Oh, that's a good place to hide the coke. You could, like, put, a, put the fake eye with the coke behind it. But, that's not a bad deal. But, yeah, and that guy, that, and then... Yeah, and then I would just experiment every now and then, and then every and then it just was around occasionally. I never saw you didn't see that much of it in Louisiana and stuff. And then one time, with some dude, and then the gay dudes was always trying to get you to do cocaine because they was trying to you know sneak into you, you know they was trying to sneak into your body, so they would be t trying to take advantage of you. And so they would uh, they always had it, you know, and you always had to like do it with them, but then like wrestle them to kind of keep <laughs> them off of your body, you know, or keep them out of your pants and everything. And almost, who knows what happened this one time. I was pretty fucked up. Thankfully, somebody had to go to the airport, you know. Otherwise, who knows what would have went down at the, in this one bathroom down in New Orleans. But but anyway, man, that's the old days. And, and yeah, now I feel, you know, I feel whatever. It's oh, it's almost as I used to have to watch him. He would put the, he's a Jew. The yeah. Jew got those fingers. They move real. Best magician for the Jews. They never <laughs> yeah, they made, yeah. It's not a big living. Oh, they keep 10% of the trick yeah, in their they, pocket. Oh, yeah. They yeah. invented the fucking magician. Yeah. Fucking Jews. They, that's who invented the magician. The Beautiful. Jew with the black top yeah. hat and shit. Yeah, they're all magicians <laughs> out of the womb, bro. So, Lee, man. You, nah, yeah, nah, last time I saw it. Lee, he was over here squealing on the panels. Oh, yeah, we were <laughs> fucked up. Fucked up. Bro, and the craziest <laughs> part about that, Joey, was... When I came in, I thought I heard a. I'm like, there's kind of a squealing in the microphone at first, and Lee's like, I'll fix it. And by the end, it was like, him. You. It was him. He's like, ah. <laughs> look like a fucking disabled gerbil, bro. <laughs> he like a fucking. That's how I felt. That was like the the deepest I've ever been on mushrooms. Oh, dang, he looked like a damn welfare gerbil. Oh he was God. over here just. Like, it was chocolate <laughs> mushrooms that smelled like Parmesan cheese. <laughs> <laughs> He was eating it, and it was foaming out of his mouth. I just put it in my mouth and drank it. I didn't deal with it. He yeah. wants to fucking chew it. He wants to snack it the all. He thinks it's Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> you got to swallow them drugs, dog. You can't be fucking That's around. what I tried to do tonight, and that's why I puked up uh, all over the floor, because you said you, you were making fun of me. You are like, just swallow that just motherfucking, swallow thing, that motherfucking thing, Lee. And it was like still a whole chunk, and my body just is like... 
I think my body is starting to fight back because I, I wasn't getting that <laughs> fucked up over back. the weekend. Because you do them every night and you do little amounts. You got to go deep, I, deep, deep. You got to get into it, 16, 1800 by yourself. <laughs> yeah, you got to get your bowels high, Lee. Yeah. I ain't 800. 800 don't do nothing for nobody. Yes, yeah. it does. That's, what are you that's an about? appetizer in your world. And first that's of all, no, I was doing over 1,000. No, you weren't. I was, I know, too. I know you. You got to get your bowels high, bro. I want to fucking, I, wanna, know, I want so, your shit to be scared. So that's funny. how high you got to get. It's so funny. We were having a conversation before the podcast started about, you know, about this is it. Like, I guarantee there's a lot of people today walking around <laughs> with an ice pack on their head going, what the fuck happened two nights ago? Yeah. Like, I went out to get two drinks, and I ended up blowing four guys. And <laughs> <laughs> my asshole shut. You know, you don't you don't know what realm you get into, you know. And uh, when we spoke today, right off the bat, you were like, listen, dog, I'm trying to keep my life together. I'm a young dude. I'm good looking. I don't want to fade away. So I've been behaving myself. Was your main thing alcohol? And then you went crazy. Yeah, I mean, well, I just ended up getting key, you know, like, I ended up getting into drugs usually sometimes at night, you But know? drugs without the alcohol, or they have alcohol had to soften you up first? I think I would just, you know, that's a good question, man. Alcohol was never, has never been a thing for me. I never cared about alcohol. I just, once people started having cocaine around, I, I just kind of liked the smell of it, you know what I'm saying, bro? What about meth? <laughs> nothing else up your nose? Oh, no, nothing like that, nothing dude. Like that. We used to do, like, uh, back in the day, some dude came through the neighborhood, I remember, with some kind of, uh, I don't know, what LSD suppository, some kind of suppositories, dude, people were doing, oh my God. yeah, do, it was like, just do, you know, putting these, like, little, they were kind of, uh, I don't want to say pink, they were kind of reddish looking little... <laughs> fucking throwing rainbow treats up your it's ass not, it's you not know? manly enough if it's pink i mean it was yeah and people was doing ls these lsd suppositories <laughs> this dude had about a i remember he probably had about 400 of them <laughs> i don't know where he got them from germany or somewhere iceland or something you know and to us that was like they got them from saturn you know we never even heard of that germany you know we'll fucking do this and people were doing acid you know uh, or L whatever it was doing the suppositories i remember for a while so i like psychedelics a little bit when i was younger uh and what else, dude? And then, but out here, I don't know what happened. I just had a couple of crazy nights. And then uh, I was like, I'm going to try something different, man. So I just decided I'm going to stop partying. If it's 2 in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes. Thinking that, you know, I'm going re to reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5.30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?